you. I'm putting my headphones on. Hey, how you doing, man? All right. How's life in isolation? Um, okay, I guess I've been writing whatever I can. I've been doing some animations independently. I uh picked up bass guitar again. Um I brought my old bass back from Ohio last Christmas, haven't touched it until uh until recently, and I've learned that Pixie songs are very easy to play. So on bass? Oh yeah. Who why I can't, the one guy whose name I can never remember from that band is the bassist. Who is oh no wait, it's Kim Deal. It's Kim Deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I mean Joey Santiago did guitar. I've heard from other guitarists that is really hard. Oh yeah, no, I I I I if I were to look at guitar tabs, I've only played guitar a little bit when I was a kid. I don't have really the finger flexibility to do it so well. Yeah. But uh bass guitar is like one note at a time, so it's real easy. But uh looking Fair. at bass tabs for anything, it's in, it's intimidating, but uh my favorite, one of my favorite bands, Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine, <clears throat> is a bass, a mostly bass band, the bassist and a drummer, and uh, Jesse Keeler, the bassist, <clears throat> does some really cool distortion with his bass guitar. And um, I, I tried looking at those bass tabs because that listening to that made me want to play bass again. And god damn, it's it's intimidating. That's why you know Jesse Keeler is one of the best in the business because he's he's just so creative with the bass. Just, I don't want to go too far off on a, uh, on a tangent, but I do want to know who do you think is the greatest bassist ever? <laughs> For me, it's between uh, Getty Lee and Jesse Keeler. You wouldn't say Jacko Pastorius? Uh, which one's he? Oh, it's more of a jazz thing. Never mind. Okay. Oh, okay. He's got a great documentary about him out there. Anyway, let's <laughs> add to our stream as well Mayhem's Muse. Jennifer, hello. Hello. Good evening. Oh, no, I keep moving off camera. There, I gotta get myself on. Oh, there you go. I can leave. <laughs> <in> over... <laughs> How are you? Doing good. John Paul Jones or Get Out? Real okay. That's fair. I I've always been a Zeppelin guy myself. Although I always think of like as much as everybody is really great in Zeppelin, and it was kind of lightning in a bottle. It was like everybody was exactly the right person with the with the distinctive way they played their instrument to fit together to form the distinctive sound that is Zeppelin. It's Bonham for me that is the defining Zeppelin guy. That heavy drum beat that he did was just, just it was just so, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Very You're obviously a Zep girl. Very tasty. And yet I'm still more of a Sabbath guy. Sorry. <gasps> I know. I had Sabbath first. I don't All know right. That's it for me. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs> uh, also joining us is another one of our regulars, Harmony. Hello. Hi. How Did are I you? Me okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is my first time to do something like this, so let's see how this works. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, excited to uh, continue with the show. I'm getting a little bit better as I go with figuring out how this works myself. Um, a lot of people coming in and already saying hi, uh, including Ben Glassall, who um, usually we would have on here, but I, 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 he insulted me earlier on our communication, so I don't think I'm going to now. So, <laughs> so we're, we're going to keep the tradition of shut the fuck up, Ben, alive here, aren't we? <laughs> We love Ben. We, we just, do love Ben. Ben's you know, a great guy. You know, you can love someone to also they're kind of your like number one whipping boy at the same time, but it's a sign of affection. That's yeah. that's our relationship with Ben. It's <laughs> healthy. Think, sure, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. There's nothing unhealthy about that. <laughs> uh, Frank is here. Everybody loves Frank. Hey, Frank. Hi, Frank. Frank. Hi, Frank. Even though he's got some of the weirdest opinions about movies of literally anyone I've ever met, but he's so charming when he states them that I almost believe him. Do not come for my Frank right now. <laughs> I will fight you. Hi, uh, <laughs> you guys. Miss you all. Uh, you too, man. And rounding out this this initial segment, we're going to add TC, who hey. is brand new to doing uh one of us stuff with us although we've certainly like done lots of stuff in the past i've known tc since w and, and his wife candace since way back in the uh spill.com days so, i'm not so, i'm not i'm not married just for the I record thought you all got married why are you <laughs> no, not married no no no, no, no. <laughs> but, i mean there's a whole other you, conversation people do that you no, okay. you keep claiming it's your first drink but you're the one married it's not my uh, <laughs> that's yeah, wait uh, i am yeah. Uh, sorry, I uh, didn't mean to break that too. So, so it is, abruptly. It, it's 8 p.m. Is this anyone's first drink, really? Over the, <laughs> the that's evening. Fair um, point. Fair point. Well, let's go into our discussion here, <laughs> which is apocalyptic stuff. and post-apocalyptic, and I put in in parentheses and dystopian, like a little just in case it fit my criteria. <laughs> uh, films that are currently streaming that you guys can find out there. I've even listed where you can see this stuff, and we're going to kind of just rip through this list and talk a little bit about each one and what you guys think. If you have any strong appealings or uh, feelings or memories about them, and 
Okay, you guys all remember when Armageddon came out and we were all like, come on, guys. Either you were like, whoa, I love that movie, like Mark uh, Cargill, or you were like me. Like, oh, it's Deep Impact 2. No, I was like, why no, is, no, why no, is no. it as good as Deep Impact? <laughs> no, I, don't, Deep I, think, Impact. I don't even remember Deep Impact, but I know I saw both in theaters. Deep I think it's all at the same time. It was, yeah, it was like, it yeah, was like a, a big month year apart. for the yeah. world that's going to end. Yeah. One claim June, one claim July, I think. I think that's the way yeah. it works. Uh, Deep Impact, big thing was it had Morgan Freeman as the president. And nice I was like, uh, I'm sorry, you win. End of story. <laughs> Morgan Freeman, who wouldn't, if Morgan Freeman right now went, you know, guys, I think we should, who hands up, who wants me to be president instead? <laughs> pretty sure he'd just be president instantly. That would be if it. there's if there's anyone interested in this sort of thing, someone has made a fan film that edited Deep Impact and Armageddon into one movie. Really? Yeah, oh, it's cut, it, it intercuts oh, between the Earth stuff <laughs> and the uh, oil riggers and space stuff. Oh, I like gosh. it, but uh, I mean, I don't hate Apocalypse uh, or Apocalypse uh, Armageddon. <laughs> it's just it's more of the same. T- it's exactly what you think it's going to be when you know who did it. You're like, yeah, uh, yeah. no surprises. Deep Impact is kind of a at least trying to be. Well, this is what might actually happen in a like a apocalyptic, possibly world ending event, how people w- would react, how the government would react. Well, mm-hmm. right. back when we used to have sane governments. I think um, the remember that time. <laughs> you, you, buy, <laughs> Four times. you buy the human interest angle in that more than I think in Ben Affleck pining over, you know, what's her name? Liv uh, Tyler. 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 Yeah, I, I, yeah I, it's amazing oh that God. after that, it's amazing that after that movie, I ended up liking Liv Tyler. I mean, obviously, Lord of the Rings did a lot of goodwill right there. But like that animal cracker scene is like. <laughs> <sighs> it's so it's, cringy. Yeah, it's quite cringe. I mean, it's no I hate sand, but it's it's in the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, I uh, just got up there. Old friend of ours in the site, David Faulkner, says hello. We used to call him Dave the Baker. Back in our days at a public access show, he used to bring us baked goods all the time, and we loved him Aww. for it. It's very, very, it's very a, sweet. A handy skill for the end of the world is to be able to bake. It really is. I do not have it, unfortunately. But if there's a frying pan, I can make whatever. Uh, Justin, of course, one of our main guys says, whipping boy? Indeed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying here. Uh, so let's, oh, and by the way, Deep Impact is on Netflix. You can see that one on Netflix right now. Uh, also, I, this one is much less seen, but Jesus, I highly recommend it. We were raving about this like two years ago, I think, when we saw it at a festival, which is The Girl with All the Gifts. It's a well into the zombie apocalypse movie. Like it's way into it. It's been going on for a long time. Everyone's sort of like, it, humanity is winding down. And they found that certain children who are infected still have the desire to like kill and eat people but they have like and they have other bonuses like added strength added intelligence but they are uh more capable of resisting the urge to go and jump on people and kill them but this girl this young girl who they're transporting around with like a hannibal lecter face mask on is sort of like the one the girl with all the gifts and it's a really great sort of like next generation here's what happens after humanity type uh post-apocalyptic movie that i don't know if any of y'all saw but really no. recommend why don't it's, i still it certainly sounds like a better version of mandy i don't know if anyone saw mandy the short singer zombie movie which is not oh, great yeah. Not great. Not great. No. no, no. It's so even the poster for Mandy, where it's like all like oh, grayscale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it's like all grayscale and and like it looks. Everyone looks sad, and because it's sad, <laughs> and Schwarzenegger is sad, and he doesn't beat anyone up, which is usually the the litmus test for whether or not you want to see a Schwarzenegger <laughs> film. That's, Step one. Yeah. Even That's, like now, uh, the one with Abigail Breslin is that 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 same one? Which one? The one with, with uh, Abigail Breslin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abigail Braceland plays the character. She's yeah, uh, bitten by a zombie and is slowly changing. Schwarzenegger's trying to keep her alive. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, TC, remind me real quick where people can find what you do online. You are uh, a filmmaker and film writer, and you've got lots of stuff you've done. Yes, you can. Uh, quick, thank you for offering me a chance to plug here. You can find uh, the majority of the films that I've made with my production crew. Uh, at Redacted Media, we have a Facebook group, we have a YouTube channel, uh, dozens of short films available. Uh, currently waiting for our f- second feature film to hit Amazon streaming very soon, uh, which is uh, a puppet Muppet style musical, fantasy musical. Nice. Which uh, a little cameo voice by a certain Martin Thomas, as a matter of fact. Oh. Okay, yeah. 
Very you didn't Chris to do a cameo? What? No, uh, <laughs> what did you say, Mike? You didn't get Chris to do a cameo? Yeah, I was about uh, to say, but you know, I wanted fine. to offer Chris a much bigger role in the sequel, and uh, it'd be only right. <laughs> uh, and you can also find a, a podcast I do called The Studio Demands It at studiodemandsit.com, which is on Apple and Google and uh, Stitcher and Spotify. And it's it's uh, me and my writing partner uh, are given a demand by a listener that says, like, uh, what if they made Predator 3 in 1993? You can't bring any actors back. You can't go to the city. You can't go to the jungle. What would you do? Go. And then we, on the spot, have to pitch and craft a film based on those stipulations. That sounds so awesome. Yeah. So oh, studio I've demands seen, that I've see, seen some of your stuff. You are very good at what you do. It's oh, my, thank you. This is like I, my friend who I'm like, just I've got the timer till he becomes like way too cool to talk to me anymore. <laughs> but we've eaten sushi <laughs> together in California. So I feel like I can always remind him of that that's, and be like, that's right. Remember that time we ate sushi in California? That was the big <laughs> deal. I, I need to get back into dry It's so damn hard to get people together. Oh, yeah. That's 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 the fun of finding uh, those uh, reliable folks that you can consistently work with, and and then finding new folks to be reliable as well. I'm so, for that. I mean, if I'm if I'm right, since it is the end of the world, and there seems to be only six of us left uh, talking to ourselves, I'll happily make a movie with you guys. I'll I'll, I'll stick with it. I might take you up on that. I mean, I'm actually trying to get an animated short film going. Once I get used to After Effects, and I'm uh, I don't want to do any of the voices in it. So. <laughs> Uh, so I was going to say, Girl with all, the gift, with all the Gifts is on Netflix. You can see that there. Highly recommend it. Next one, I bet at least half of you have seen. This is on Netflix as well. Just launched this month. That's Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. End of the world from That's giant mutant clowns. Oh. Um, Mess me up as a kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> my childhood best friend's favorite movie of all time. I saw that in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> But it is a lot of fun. The creators of it, the Chiodo brothers, are like just recently kind of coming back into like anyone being aware they're even still alive, kind of on some level. They've just <laughs> recently just doing a lot of stuff on social media and they're really nice. I've even had them leave, like, you know, I've I've never met them in person, but I friended them both online and they both friended me back. I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And leave messages on stuff. And I'm like, these guys made a formative movie for my childhood. And to be fair, not a lot of sense. But you know. <laughs> he also did uh, the puppets on Team America World Police. That's why I first heard of their name. Was that them? I did not oh, know. Yeah. Very cool. America. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, I do want to say next up is the Matrix trilogy is now on Netflix. All one of them, they, and the two movies that never I, actually I'm, happened. Wait, they made they made more than one. I'm confused. No, yeah. they, uh, no they, they, did, they did an animated one. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. The they animatrix. Yeah, only one. I don't think the Animatrix is on Netflix. I'm actually not sure. I didn't double check on it's that. Not, but, uh, but yes, the the three Matrix films. What are you saying, Frank? Does anybody forget they're making a new one? I keep yeah. on forgetting that fact. Oh, Matrix yeah, right. the filming got delayed because of the quarantine. Like they started shooting, or rather. <laughs> Lana started shooting because I guess Lily's out of the picture currently when it comes to directing. But uh, yeah, Lana's been directing it, and I guess it's postponed because of uh, the virus. Everything's okay. Yeah. I came up with oh, that yeah. in production. I keep on just that seems to be my mind for some reason. I don't know why. I think we're like, like, uh, I tend so, to like Wachowski movies more often than not, uh, with the exception of, the, of these non-existent Matrix sequels. And I never saw that Jupiter as Ascending or Jupiter no, Rising. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid to see that because it sounds really <laughs> bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> but I, I love I loved the Speed Racer movie. I know it's a lot of people tend to slag on it, but I love it. And uh, I really like Cloud Atlas, so oh, I tend to like it more often than not. But yeah. uh, I, I, do my, I don't know if y'all heard my theory about what's going on with the Matrix 4, but the Matrix 4 and John Wick uh, 4 are coming out, like, I think the same week. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. They're, like, right next to each other, and they know this. And they're both Gamma Reeves, crazy action movies. My theory is they're going to tie them together so the John wick verse turns out to just yeah. be the next level of the Matrix, and that's what happened to Neo. He didn't yeah. die. He just went into another level of the Matrix reality, and that's been John Wick, and none of that is real and they'll tie it up. <laughs> I ship that super hard. <laughs> John Wick and Neo, I would watch that. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> there there are worse things they could do with a Matrix sequel. They could make a, you know, just renege on uh, Neo being a Superman and make him go to talk to some weird guy in a white suit and kill Trinity. And like, They could do they'd worse. Never, they'd, they'd never do that. Never do that. <laughs> There's so many great ideas in the sequels. 
but the execution is weird. It's just people lecturing you about shit most of the time. Inter interspaced, awesome by, interspaced by action, <laughs> poorly <laughs> conceived of action scenes. And pleather. And what? <laughs> Lots of pleather. Lots of pleather. Yeah. Dude, the rave scene, what was that? What was happening yeah. there? Amazing. <laughs> 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 uh, so, so next that was up, like nineteen, so there is you go. <laughs> Disney's uh, are they Disney's only post-apocalyptic film? I think Wally. -E. Ah, oh, Wally, -E. oh, oh, -E. Wall -E. yeah, that's on just yeah. that got added to Disney Plus now. Uh, Wally's -E a classic, man. That's a Pixar yeah. classic, and it is indeed, far as I'm concerned, counts as a post-apocalyptic film. I mean, like the oh, Earth totally is, just is rubble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> there are too many real feelings in that movie. I am not prepared to feel all of those feelings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're definitely lighthearted, and it made you like it's kind of like therapy that movie. And all of it. No, not ready um, for it. No. Oh, but it's Pixar. They're all kind of that way. Except, well, the good ones to some extent or another. <laughs> Out of curiosity, yeah. like just going down the list, uh, favorite Pixar movie, real quick, Mago Mike. Um, probably Wally. -E. Jennifer. Jennifer. I don't like Pixar, so. Whoa. None. I know. Oh. I know. <laughs> Controversial. Right. Harmony. Oh, Jesus. Um, da, 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 da. First brave. one. Brave. brave. Okay. Frank? Yep. Funny Nemo. Of course it is. Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, I can change one real quick. Mine's actually the Incredibles. You can't change uh, it. TC? Uh, well, okay. mine's going to be the only good Fantastic Four movie we've ever gotten. The Incredibles. Uh, gotten. Yeah. Mike is correct. The Incredibles. Yeah. Yeah. It is the Incredibles. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. I will second Harmony, though. If I had to choose one, it would be Brave. Brave. Well, that's, you're yeah. an archer. Yeah, yeah. It, Brave is pretty great. I mean, geez. I mean, Emma Thompson is the big bear. I just, I, I like that. <laughs> I, mean, I, I will say uh, Pixar has has an interesting library like all the Marvel movies in that one of someone's favorite movie is any of the movies. And uh, I, I think that's pretty odd. Like even Cars and Cars 2 and Cars 3, there's someone out there that's like, that's my favorite Pixar. We all have better taste than that. But uh, <laughs> you ever see Planes? Was that ever? Mm, that's uh, a, that, that, was, uh, that was just Disney, but not um, Pixar. Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> I heard about it. I just never seen it. said I did see it and it was fine. Uh, <laughs> so, point, the archery and brave is actually pretty on point. It's one of the only movies that gets it right for the region and time period. Okay. Nice. I <laughs> bow to your superior knowledge. Uh, Sorry. That was low hanging fruit. I know it where was. It was. Where were you are? That's a really, uh, really great central character. That's what really sells it. I, and you know, she's just so awesome. That's a great protagonist to have in a Pixar movie. Uh, so next up, we've got A Quiet Place, which is now on Amazon and Hulu. I just rewatched this the other day. We're trying to do keep doing the digital noise stuff, which has been a little difficult with everything that's going on, which is the home release show we do. But they put out a steel book of it uh, that's been upgraded to 4K. It looks and sounds terrific. Uh, believe it or not, long stretches of silence sound better in uh, 4K <laughs> and upgraded <laughs> sound than they do on regular. I don't oh, know yeah. how else to explain it. Those 4K sound. Feet, so. Yeah. yeah 4K, nothing. There's literally silence. It's I can so hear good. nothing. 4K, <laughs> 4K non sound. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I really love a quiet place. I love it more the second time. My first problem with it when I when I watched it initially it was the same thing. I think a lot of other people are. Why the fuck are you having a baby? What is wrong with <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah. Look what around I, you. What I, is? Yeah, I was well, we're that. already it's saying hard. that there was like a condom shortage for this. So you know, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, just like nope, we're never getting it again ever yeah, because yeah. we can't afford that. So yeah. sorry. I, I, it seems weird to me though. Like of all the like, like how fast that apocalypse happened with these giant killer monsters, and clearly took down civilization super fast, where there were not a huge amount of survivors. That condoms are the things that disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> that I was like, really? Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, the pharmacy still had like medication in their hometown, <laughs> but Kong, they, the Trojan Wall is devastated. They <laughs> they tried every solution they could think of to stop these things. Like, try guns. No, it's not working. Throw a thing at it. Okay, I got that. Okay, so it was they they tried everything. They tried everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I watching it a second time helped with sort of like a lot of people argued with me about is like, look, what are you supposed to do? She got pregnant. I mean, obviously they're a very loving couple. They're not gonna stop having sex. I mean, what else is there to do? It's you I know, mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're before this apocalypse happened though. I mean, well, I never understood the timeline of that movie of the first one. 
Yeah. Oh, could she have My been pregnant before the end of the world? Yeah, like, yeah like they, they had sex the next day. Oh, look what's happened. No, I actually double checked that with the timing uh, between when the kid dies and the uh, uh, she being pregnant. Timing doesn't work. It's too long. She would have gotten pregnant after that. So she's actually well, an elephant. Is, is the secret there? It's not yeah. just irresponsible right. parenting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, honestly, well, who among us would not, in an end of the world scenario, with Chan Krasinski want to sleep with him every night? I mean. Oh, or you know, I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean no, no, or a, or Emily Blunt, fine. Emily Blunt. Yeah. I mean, I probably would do either one of them, especially after Krasinski's great uh, good news videos he's been putting up, which I would just like. Oh, I haven't seen those yet. I haven't seen those yet. Um, oh, it's it's just so charming. It really, literally made me tear up, and I, I that sort of thing that's kind of like felt like. You know, I was like, this is going to be kind of triacly, but I'm glad someone's doing it. But it really did get to me. Like, there was a girl he covered on it. It was like, uh, who was had come home after successful chemotherapy, a little girl, had shaved. And everyone with social distancing on their street came out on her street with balloons and cheering and signs and everything for her coming home. And then to top that, he had her on the show and talked to her. I was like, you're my hero. You're amazing. I was like. I, I will watch them any day as a couple. I love my favorite thing about the Quiet Place is watching them do press for a Quiet Place. Like they're both on Graham, they're both on Graham Norton and Emily Blunt told the story of like how she came in and John Krasinski is watching Devil 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 Wears Prada, and there's that sequence when he when Meryl is coming in, you know, at the time, and he's like, and that's my favorite outfit. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so next up, we have Shaun of the Dead. Come on, yes, one of my all time, all time favorite movie. Now, I I don't know. I, I I don't think I know anyone who hadn't seen it, and I know uh, like very few people who don't even own their own copy of it. But if you don't and, and you want to see it again, which why wouldn't you? Because it's still one of those movies that is like comfort food. You're gonna have a great time yeah. every time you watch it. It's on Stars. They dropped it this month on there, so they have added it to their lineup. Uh, an all time classic for sure. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I feel like, a, what do you guys think? But we know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, oh, wait, Jennifer has an alternate opinion. Jen, I'm pointing at you. I know, surprising uh, everybody because I go along with everything and the zombos just don't do it for me. Really? Not, not into the zombo flicks. Hard right. no. I'm not going to think a zombie movie guy either, but I fucking love Shaun the Dead. But that one's so funny, yeah. though. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> if you had to do it, that's the way to do it, but just All not right. my technology. That's like fair. my zombies have to have comedy. I've, I've figured out that it has to be Shaun of the Dead or it has to be Zombie Land or something like that. Otherwise, yeah. there's like just no hope, and I can't, I can't <laughs> sit through that. If you're gonna do it. You have to have a backtrack of Queen. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's it. That's my writer. Absolutely. I will say I'm more, I'm more World's End than Shaun of the Dead. I, I love the World's really? End. That's great. Right. Oh, right. Thank you. It, it was my favorite movie of the year when it came and, out. I, I saw it four times in the theater. Wow, that's 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 strange. That's always like uh, it's a fine movie, but it's always the least of the three. Yeah, uh, Shaun of the Dead is yeah. is a, is For fantastic. The most, yeah, I know well, even then, the weakest of the Cornell trilogy still. It's it's a fucking great trilogy. No, agreed. Uh, for me, Hot Fuzz is the best of the three. Person. Yeah, yes. I, I, yeah, I'll take Hot Fuzz as well. And for those international listeners, uh, Shaun of the Dead is streaming on Netflix in several countries so canada okay um, all the uh, scandinavian countries as well yeah ex express vpn or if that thing is that's right <laughs> on every interview except ours. so one of the movies i would put almost certainly in my top five of all time uh post-apocalyptic movies is 12 monkeys by terry gilliam and that yeah, is okay. now dropped on showtime it's certainly i would say maybe the most um intellectual maybe for lack of a cerebral of all the apocalypse movies which tend not to be wildly cerebral let's face it yeah <laughs> but i mean i'm not so sure so so yeah but 12 monkeys is is not only that it's also one of the best time travel movies out there uh it's based very loosely on a french short from i i want to say the 60s called la jete uh mm -hmm. that just uses black and white photography to tell the story which yeah, is you, central viewing it in film school that short film yeah, yeah, I think the Criterion edition of it actually has that film attached to it. But oh, Twelve Monkeys is terrific. Anybody who ever argues Bruce Willis is a tolerable actor across the board, you clearly <laughs> have to watch Twelve Monkeys because he's so good in it. Uh, wonderful movie. I want to say, and uh, sorry to stick on zombies again, but Train to Busan, the Korean oh, South, South Korean yes. film. It's Train to Busan too. They just dropped the trailer for it. Uh, yeah, uh, what is it called? I can't remember. It's got a different name. Oh, it's not called that. Remember. It's called something. 
Blah, I can't remember. There's actually a Train to Busan, Busan Zero, which is an animated film, and that's on Netflix. Uh, train, <laughs> train to Busan to Peninsula. Peninsula. Oh, there you okay. go. But uh, weirdly, Train to Busan is not on one of the standard ones. Voodoo, which is a streaming service that is weirdly owned by Walmart. I just found that out recently. Really? But, but it's usually yeah. a place like you wow. go to to put all your digital codes up on. But every once in a while, they put some stuff they put out there for free. I didn't even know that until recently. Yeah. Train to Busan is free yeah. on there. For free, yeah, yeah. I only used like the free stuff once. Um, and it there's commercials, but whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. Jennifer, unfortunately, yeah, really train to Busan. yeah. It's it's train, out, to, <laughs> train Busan is like intense South Korean filmmaking, it's so kinetic and crazy. Uh, I just yeah, I really love it. Jennifer's calling me out for not doing Waterworld, but I don't think that's available streaming right now anywhere, so I don't know what to tell you. Is it? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Arrow put out last year, though, an excellent uh, Blu-ray of it where they upgraded it. They actually have the considerably okay. longer, hard to believe there is a thing, uh, version of <laughs> the director's <laughs> cut. And like some like 30 hours of documentaries. It's insane. It's like a three-disc set. It's ridiculous. Eight <laughs> hours of extra footage. <laughs> <laughs> you did in your life, extra footage. Come Marco... Work. Marco brings up Twilight Zone's apocalyptic tale time enough at last. I believe that's the one where the guy breaks his glasses at the end of it. Who wants to sit there with his all read oh, yeah, all his books. Classic, yeah. yeah, classic. No, I, I, well, well, I can't. No, I can't. Uh, this is a movie that's set at the end of the world. That's one of my <laughs> favorites. And you got me into it, Chris, back in the school days. A movie called It's a Disaster, which um, is kind of the hipster version of This is the End. It's a bunch of uh hipsters getting ready for a couple's brunch and there's a terrorist attack downtown and everyone's just waiting for the wing to die basically <laughs> the rest of the day and it's uh mostly dialogue driven movie but it's one of my favorites like that's one of the biggest like that that's where that's something i found through spill that i just fell in love with and i still watch at least once a year awesome yeah that is a, i forgot about that actually but that is a fun one i remember having a great time with that uh moving on hulu is launched has 28 days later which obviously for a lot of people is a big one uh that's oh, like yeah. the rage zombie the sequel to 28 days zombies yeah. is a virus <laughs> yeah, as opposed to it being like dead people coming back from <laughs> life i've never um, seen it yeah. I enjoyed... oh wait jennifer enjoyed the uh, zombie film i enjoyed that one oh, okay, okay. All right. yep, that's the one that breaks my mold I had, because zombos, but look, I, I try not to be the guy who's like, I'm really loving this, but then one moment kind of fucking sticks in my craw so bad that it kind of sours the whole thing. But the moment where the guy, we're like rooting for him and he successfully got through all this stuff and he looks up and a single drop of blood goes in his eye, drops in his eye. That shit drove me up the fucking wall. Uh. I hated that so much. I was like, that's dumb. That is like, <laughs> from a narrative point of view, that was a cheap, cheap move and i was Agreed. not happy about it at all uh joseph Con compton points out adventure time is technically a post-apocalyptic show also hail um yeah that's very true i thought no. about putting this on the list uh adventure time is is i i'm not the right group for adventure time i don't take psychedelic drugs anymore and i'm not <laughs> 10 but it's great i still enjoy watching it it's a lot of fun uh Another really cerebral one that's also in my top five is Children of Men, which yes. is on Stars now. If you've never seen Children of Men, it is it's like Oscar worthy post apocalyptic yeah. films. If you yeah, Alfonso Cuarón, like that no that, hope thing again. That was, that was the movie to watch in two thousand six, and I I mean you could tell even then it wasn't getting the props it deserved. It just like it felt like everyone was just ignoring it. Like, this is brilliant. I mean, why isn't everyone just, you know, jumping all over this? And it was also one of the first films, like, well, recently with this sort of slew of movies, like, we're doing one long shot that go on for a long time. It was one of the yeah. first ones to do that, where it's like, oh, we're going to do a super complicated, really long shot. I think it was like 12 minutes, which nowadays is nothing, but it was <laughs> a wildly impressive running through this big war scene, like single shot thing. And I remember watching it and just being like on the edge of my seat going, holy shit, this is incredible. Yeah, there's, there's three scenes in that movie that are one continuous shot. The one you're talking about is near the climax, but there's also yeah. the one in the, uh, the car. Yeah. Where, yeah. It, oh man, it's a, a yeah. yeah. Quran is one of the finest directors out there. Uh, between that and Gravity and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, oh, uh, oh, Harry Potter three. I mean, <laughs> Harry Potter, th the best Harry Potter. No. Yes. Don't get me started. Didn't Don't do it. <laughs> I got to. I got to talk to Jennifer off mic here. Uh, I'm Harry Potter. We'll nerd <laughs> on Harry Potter. Like, like, you know, coming back from Harry Potter three. <laughs> 
Frank, what are you saying? I can't hear you. No, I'm sorry. His filmography is just so wild. Like, this is also the guy that did Great Expectations and A Little Princess and just like, man, he's just, there's no rhyme or reason to and it. And Roma. You can't contain him. Oh, yeah. That was what I was The book uh, right behind me, actually. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer points out Demolition Man is on Amazon Prime right now, which is also technically kind of. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. call that, that's I'll more, that. that's like we dystopian sure. future, but you know. That's memories of. Demolition Man. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Uh, I saw that at the at the Dollar Cinema here in Austin uh, uh, when I was a child, and I just I would see it like three times. <laughs> it's a scary I, movie. I don't think it's streaming old. anywhere, but Harmony's husband Michael points out Zardoz was a freaky man. I count me under that weird <laughs> group that like loves Zardoz, man. I'm like, <laughs> uh, all my favorite cult movies that are generally considered to be horrible, but I love anyway, are all in the last couple letters of the alphabet. Is that Xanadu? You know, I'm good. <laughs> I think we. Uh, I think we know what uh, outfit Chris here is going to be wearing when the when the apocalypse finally like settles in. Oh, Just you're damn right. Leather man speedo with oh. the furry Strap. chest. Yeah, I think that should be like the one of us like Christmas party attire for this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be yeah. like, the penis is bad. Guns are also questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remembering now. I ordered and the book. I saw Demolition Man was when I ordered off Columbia Houses, like pick twelve VHS tapes for free and get them sent to you. And my twelve year old was like, okay, sure, yeah, Demolition Man, well, Stallone, let's do this. Yeah, <laughs> the got an Oscar, sure, okay. <laughs> uh, we also have Zombieland, which is on Hulu and CBS streaming, which is always fun. Okay. I went and rewatched it recently. A lot of people are like oh, Zombieland too is nowhere near and as good. You, it's been too long since you've seen Zombieland. Right. They're basically about the same level of good yeah. for my mind. Yeah, they're like they're, they're interchangeable. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I, I think they're both pretty good. Uh, Snowpiercer is on Netflix now, oh, which, uh, yes. which I know. get it to do. I get anybody who has problems with it because it's definitely not a flawless film in terms of story. <laughs> Those points are like your metaphor is beating your actual like script over the head and just its brains are all over this movie uh, but that's fine it's still a really fun movie to watch i'm really curious to know how they're going to pull off a television series of it which is coming up yeah. soon but yeah. hey. is it, is it thing given constantly getting delayed over and over uh well i mean it's been delayed only because of everything else going on yeah. uh Compton I, 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 thought, out, I thought it kept getting delayed even before the quarantine like i thought i kept hearing oh it's going to come out in january that's going to come out in march now it's going to come out in may Compton points out one of the animated post-apocalyptic classics, Nasca Valley of the Wind, done by yeah, Hayao Miyazaki. Yes, 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 yes. Hundred percent unfamiliar with Giant God Warrior appears in Tokyo, but I don't know what to. Uh, maybe Jennifer knows. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a yes? You know. No, or, oh, you're trying to cover up. Okay, that's okay, fine. Totally. That's fine. All right. Well, that uh, one I don't know. Nasca. Nasca's great. Yeah, Nasca's, uh, I've often argued it's my favorite of all the Miyazaki's, but I, I don't know. That's a hard conversation to have. <laughs> I say that after every time I watch one. I'm like, now that's my favorite one. So, you know. <laughs> uh, The Cabin in the Woods is on Amazon and Hulu. Yes, it is yes. an apocalypse film. It is yes. one of the, I think it might be the only one on this entire list where we literally see the world end. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah like, it, 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 it's really just, it, it really throws it out there at the end. Like, it, you, like you can't believe that that's how they choose to end it, and they fucking did it. Well, a movie that right. starts off like, oh, this is a cute comedy that's a meta story about like, like slasher and like uh, various types of horror films right. ends up being about all of humanity dying in the earth ending <laughs> thanks to yeah. the old ones from like Cthulhu. You're like, oh, wow, okay, that I did not see that coming. As the world end, and then the first thing you hear after the world ends is Nine Inch Nails, and it's like, all right. <laughs> Be over, man. Like, the, end of the world's not so bad that I thought for sure after that movie came out that maybe we'd see an end to the slew of Cabin in the Woods style like horror slasher movies. Evil Dead came out like three months later, and and we just continue to get the the cliche derivative Cabin in the Wood. I I'm guilty. I've written like five of them. So <laughs> for a reason. To be fair, to be fair, he went from there to The Martian, and then Bad Times at the El Royale, which I watched this past weekend. Michael but, points but, out we see the end, world end in knowing. Yes, but that's a terrible movie and no one should see it. So. <laughs> Cage? Is that Nick Cage? Yeah, it's it's awful. <laughs> oh I fucking hate that movie so much. Oh, my God. Uh, like many of Nick Cage's recent films. Uh, well, that's yeah. fair. I, I mean, hey, Colorado Space was pretty damn good outside well, of yeah, Cage's. Mandy. Oh, that is a whole other conversation. 
Yeah. The trumpets were a bit too much, like. Yeah, yeah. I love my Cthulhu, but no, thank you. Mandy. Uh, not enough Mandy, right. for that. Uh, lastly, I have Delicatessen, which is available on a Ma oh. Amazon and Criterion mm. channel. I, oh, yeah. I, a French masterpiece uh, by uh, Jean, the Jean Genet. Am I saying that correctly? I think yeah, I'm saying I can't that remember. The guy who directed Amelie, that's all I can... Yeah, the guy who directed oh, Amelie. Yeah. Yeah. And The City of oh. Lost Children, which is a weird and wonderful, very rhythmic, artistic film that's like... I say artistic, don't get scared off. It's super fun. It's really f like nonstop fun, where it's like everything is kind of... There's like just little stations of humanity existing. Like it's it, the place itself is like an old burnout, falling apart hotel, like cheap... cheap even when it was around hotel like or, or you know and uh there's cannibalism going on and all this stuff and the main character is kind of this nebbishy guy who is not one of those type people who's just trying to dodge all the the, the worst parts of it all so I do have to go on the news at some point here, but I want to list real quick uh, my top recommendations. Uh, Justin Sarian, one of my big partners on the site here, helped me to put together a list of all the stuff that just dropped on or is about to drop on streaming this month that we really recommend. He gave me this huge list of stuff that was all largely good. I narrowed it down to a few <laughs> things because it was a huge list. But just to <laughs> go through, all of the James Bond films before Daniel Craig are on Hulu. All yep. of them. Oh, no, no shit. So... <laughs> <laughs> you can go there and bond out. That's kind of awesome. Uh, right. Very excited. Community seasons one through six are on Netflix, yes. which yeah. is I, I will be watching because I've never seen season six because they remember they launched it on Yahoo streaming. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Fucking yeah. garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't yeah. work. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. See, I watched it on my Apple TV. It worked just fine. Okay, so I tried to watch it on my like just on uh, on my computer, which high speed internet connection on Yahoo, it would just like stutter and stop, and I was yeah. like, "Fuck this, I'm not watching it." So, but <laughs> now it's on Netflix. The season, season, I think you'll like it. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to finally seeing how it ends. Although I'm sure it's not as good as the previous seasons, but I still hey. want to. Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, Marco, I don't know the answer to that. The Aladdin be bond. I did not. He says, including uh, uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. I want to say yeah. I saw that on there, but I'm not 100% sure. Marco, on that. Marco, Marco Amy's that question because I love me some George Lazenby. So, uh, the, the Honor Majesty's Secret Service is a real classic. They made a documentary about him and that movie not that long ago, which I'm blanking yeah. on. That. I, I think it's on Hulu. I think it's called Being Bond, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, He's like the only guy, I think, who not counting the original Casino Royale, but who only played Bond once. Yeah. yeah. He didn't want a contract, I think, or something like that. He didn't want to be his agent his agent advised him not to be tied down to a friend. Oh my God. <laughs> Good uh, Lethal Weapon 1 through 4 have dropped on Netflix. I recommend three of them quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Even four uh, is not terrible. It's not uh, becoming Bond. Becoming Bond becoming is the name Bond. of that documentary, and, and it's Bond. on. It's on. You've heard of that documentary? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. Um, no, nope, no worries. Uh, lethal, lethal, lethal weapon there. Lethal weapon movies are super fun. The first two, I think, are absolute all-time classic comedy action films. Uh, they're great. The third one goes a little deeper, a lot deeper into the comedy side of it over the action, but it still works. It's still pretty good. Four is I think I want to say it was Jet Li's American debut and they have no fucking clue what to do with them. <laughs> one really funny scene where he's just beating the shit out of the two leads who yeah. are just kind of like, what the fuck are we supposed to do here? This guy, <laughs> it's a great scene. And the rest of it's just, eh, it's all right. Um, <laughs> we have got, we forgiven Mel Gibson? I, I wasn't sure that happened. Yet, no, but so, you can still okay. watch his old streaming movies. Just you don't <laughs> There's, there's no coming back from that. No. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. just just checking. I'm not going to stop watching Ro the Road Warrior because oh, he's not. That's true. Out. But that's you true. can you can like him before that. You can like him pre that. Yeah, <laughs> I guess I don't know. Okay. Uh, Mud, Matthew McConaughey, like hey, one yeah. of the yeah. launching points of the McConaughey's is yeah. on Netflix now. <laughs> uh, that's such a good movie. Highly that's recommend true. it. Great drama. Can't hardly wait. The oh, best John know. Hughes movie, not by John Hughes, is now on Netflix. I was playing my drivers off when that movie came out. That yeah. was Aww. That that movie is so cute and adorable. If you are a fan of like so of like The Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles, yeah. Can't Hardly yeah. Wait is like that film that like if John Hughes was still making those type of films twenty years later, that's this is the movie he would have made. And it's yeah. really <laughs> great. He said he was writing that Jennifer Lopez movie that no one really likes. What movie was that? Uh, the one that one, the made Manhattan. Yeah, he, uh, uh, yeah. he, he wrote a couple. Of, he wrote a couple of movies under a pseudonym, but I think they're story by Krebs. Like he did, 
he did one of the early Judd Apatow productions as oh. well when he was taking off as a producer. It was written by uh, John Hughes under a pseudonym as well. Well, uh, let's not forget, he wrote National Lampoon's Vacation, amongst many other big films. Yeah, that oh, yeah. was a, uh, one of his big first shots across the bow. In fact, I believe that's why he cast Anthony Michael Hall, because he was the son in that film. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so Amazon has finally put out the lighthouse, which yeah. I know oh, one, good, of, good. one of the best movies from last year that yeah. almost no one I know has actually seen outside of people <laughs> who are, who I loaned my screen or two. Uh, I wanted to see. I, was talking about. You know, I it's, saw it. It's great. It's, it's it's such a trip. Oh my god! It's it was one of my favorite movies of this past year. It is decidedly a horror film. So if stuff that is horror is not your thing, be clear. It's like psychological drama horror, but it's definitely a horror oh film. I mean, oh, well, like um, Twilight Zone surrealist. It's, it's so strange. It's surreal. It's William <laughs> Defoe and um uh uh what's his name, Robert Pattinson, just trying desperately to outact each other and somehow <laughs> Pattinson holds up his end of the bargain. Yeah. Like, wow. The foe is the MVP of that movie. Like, you yeah. like my lobster. Admit it, you like my lobster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like this comment. There you go, Ben said it's <laughs> so much <laughs> sexual tension. Yeah. yeah. We don't desire, but we definitely want I'm here for it. <laughs> okay, it's all gonna be all Caligula up in here in a moment. <laughs> oh. Another, I another. I'm sorry. No, yeah. What'd you say? I Jeff? said nobody deserves Willem Dafoe. Yeah, he's too. Yeah, I mean, uh, he just gets yeah. holiday. He does. Uh, Parasite is coming on Hulu. Another yeah. uh, really one of the best of the year, if not the best of the year. Yeah. Yeah, um, the South Korean thriller coming on Hulu. Uh, Die Hard one through three. It's coming on HBO, which okay. uh, Die Hard 1 and 3, I think, are both, I'm sorry, unassailable. I'm just going to say it. People are like, 3? Really? I'm like, fuck you. 3 is like so close. I've actually never seen 3. So I'll probably is, to me, oh, it's, great. it's almost as good as 1. I don't know. I think okay. it's not as good, but it's almost as good as I, 1. I've actually, I've only seen one of the sequels, and that was uh, uh, the one that Kevin Smith was in. Four. Uh, oh, four. Yeah, really? that's, that's the only really? sequel I've seen what? of Die Hard. Really? Yeah. This is why really? you fail, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get oh, around to it. Not fired. I mean, it's Die Hard. Die Hard and then Die Hard with a Vengeance. It's, it's a live free or fuck you, Mike. Watch Die Hard 3. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Here, fuck you. <laughs> uh, HBO is putting out two uh, movies that I recommend both of, and people will argue with me about it, but by the same director, The Nice Guys and The Predator. Are both coming oh, out of HBO. Uh, I was gonna yeah, nice guys. I was gonna I I've been meaning to watch it again lately. Everybody um, wanted the Predator to be this great action thriller, and what he made was sort of a meta comedy thriller, and I thought it was amazing. And that's <laughs> partially because I don't give a shit about the pr fucking Predator. <laughs> I was like, well, the first movie was like, this is fun. It's not one of the best Schwarzenegger. Sorry, but it's good. It's fun. It's a cool looking character. And people are still like, I mean, I think Predator 2 is better than Predator 1. Sorry. Whoa, but, nice. That I mean, is <laughs> okay. I, that's bold. That's great. I love okay. that opinion. Bold save it. I but, think my favorite thing about Predator was the new knowledge that I just got recently that Jean Claude Van Damme was originally supposed to play the Predator. Oh, no shit. you can, yeah, yeah you can so find he, behind he the scene footage of him. He was originally the Predator. <laughs> but he was not the person, you were never going to see him, and he'd be in the suit the whole time, so he quit. And, uh, the, and the original suit is ridiculous orange, like green screen nonsense. It's because amazing. the whole background was green, so they couldn't make the suit green, so it had to be orange. He hated it. <laughs> oh, it's it is it, yeah. You can go on YouTube and find like the test footage, and it's it is great. I'm how crappy it is. I'm honestly disappointed. That I'm not getting as much shit as I expected about loving the Predator. But I'm sorry. I, I'm very You're entitled to the wrong opinion. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. I have so few of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have many of them. So I'm just Those are oh hello. Yeah, <laughs> very orange. Oh, that, that is very, um, very orange. That is John Claude Van Damme in a what would have been like a very bug looking predator. And uh, wow. they kept like a majority of the footage and then hired Stan Winston to fix the damn thing and gave us the classic. Oh, oh wow. In the background. <laughs> the predator now with a nice citrus scent. <laughs> can, we, can we give a shot to the nice guys though? Because I feel like that movie needs to get as 
every oh, plug. Yes, in. hell yes. That movie isn't fantastic. Isn't yes, exactly. I mean, that's like a laugh a minute, and it's exhausting sometimes because it is so humor filled. But man, if that movie doesn't hold up in terms of the rewatch quality and the value of it. Great, great. Like, great. seriously, if there's people out there who like <laughs> uh, uh, period piece, it's uh, like set in the 70s. 70s uh, LA. Buddy Cop. 70s LA, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but buddy movies. It's sort of like a, it's a a little more um, user uh, audience um, friendly. Once upon a time in Hollywood setting, in terms go, of yeah. like not long drawn out sequences of driving, just long drawn out sequence of snappy dialogue. Take a take a Kim Basinger, you got yourself a real like perfect movie. Uh, Machek Machek <laughs> has a question there for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Um, yeah, his name is Dean. He's actually uh, yeah, he's Real Haas's dog. Um, his roommate. Yeah. Uh, but he's, uh, yeah, he's currently out dude Rachel like right now. So I'm looking after him and he's been a little shit to some of it. If you see like me go on <laughs> mute or go off camera, it's mostly to tell him to stop barking. He's very <laughs> sad <laughs> social media. So we're going to move on. He's opinionated about movies. Yeah, yeah indeed. Yeah, very very. Sad. He he thinks, buddy. Like me, he loves the predator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, just you, huh? The only David Lynch film that will ever be on Disney Plus has launched on Disney Plus, which is The Straight Story, a really tremendously charming and wonderful, yeah, yeah. like yeah. straight ahead, non psychedelic, non crazy movie that is great. In fact, it was nominated for an Oscar, for God's sakes. It's wow. so good. History has forgotten about it. I for, yeah. I'm it blanking. Like a, it's the only David Lynch movie I haven't seen yet. I'm blanking on the name of the actor, but it was his last movie. Richard Richard who uh, suicide like not long after the Oscars? Okay, yeah, All right. charming. Oh. Ready, to, ready to bring up the charming <laughs> movie part down there. You know, it is a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Farnsworth hey, is the actor who passed away. Uh, plays one more like a speech impediment and sort of an agoraphobic um, type character, and she's brilliant in it as well. I mean, it's such a sweet, true story, actually, isn't it? Isn't it a true story? I want to say it's based on a true story, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah. So this one's a little like, uh, there's a little nepotism here, but my buddy John Schnitzer, uh, who uh, I met at Fantastic Fest, premiered his film, his documentary there, Haunters, The Art of the Scare. This was previously on Netflix. Uh, it's now dropping on Shutter. It is the best documentary about actual haunted houses. Like not, I'm sorry, like haunted houses with actors. You know, not haunted houses that have real ghosts. Quote, quote. <laughs> uh, um. It's terrific. It has that come that look at both the super extreme haunted house people. The people are like, "Oh, this is the one you've got to sign a waiver for." Oh God, it's gonna kill you. <laughs> sign the waiver just in case it does kill you. In fact, yeah. And then people who are like, "What is wrong with you people? Why would you want to do that?" And it, looking at the sort of the range of from uh, of the different ways people consider what is appropriate and what's not what's good and what's not and it gets so in depth with those extreme houses if you know only just that there are is such a thing like houses that are so freaky that like people walk out of it crying this is the one that gets in depth into why and it's wow it's a great movie i highly recommend it road to perdition tom hanks movie is on wow. i know yeah Dino so Dino. good Dude, uh, paul newman oh yeah, Paul Newman. Yeah, I almost forgot Paul Newman was in that. Yeah. Sure, based on a graphic novel, tremendously great sort of mobster drama guy, reluctantly with the, the son father drama with the, him having to deal with the mob. Anyway, great movie. Taxi Driver. The future Superman. Indeed. Future Superman, Taylor uh, Hochelin is the kid in. Uh, That's right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot that. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's a Sam oh. Mendes movie. It's a, I keep on forgetting that's a Sam Mendes movie. Uh, by the yeah, way, Mark Daniel Craig's in it too. Yeah. Marco says this, what is your favorite shot in all of Lynch's career? We'll return to that in a second. Uh, Road to uh, Taxi Driver is on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. If you've not I seen mean, Taxi Driver at this point. Now, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, get off the panel. I mean, yeah. almost everything has been influenced by Scorsese's Taxi Driver that has mm -hmm. come since that is in any way psychological drama or action. It's it's a masterpiece. Even if you don't think you, even if you're not a Scorsese fan, you kind of owe it to yourself to watch it just to understand the language of film, mm -hmm. if you will. Ending. <laughs> no, I have a, a friend who's a pretty oh, yeah. ant. Well, well, hold on. Oh. TC, you kind of faded out there oh. for a second. What'd you say? Oh, Frank. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Oh, no, no, no. I was just like, I was just like taking that ending in the hotel room. It's like really like, wow. Oh, yeah. 
Anyways. Yeah. I haven't watched mm-hmm. it in a long time, but um, I do love that movie. Well, yeah. watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I got plenty of time. Uh, another film that a lot of people, it's weird how many people I've seen list this as like one of their all time favorite movies. Like just today, I saw someone on their Facebook go, My favorite movie of all time is The Social Network. And I was like, I mean, I really like I that love The Social movie. Network. That's, that's yeah, a good movie. Yeah. A lot. It's Aaron my Fortune second favorite movie. of the decade. It's a good uh, movie. It's, a good it's movie. on. It's on Netflix. It dropped on Netflix, and it is a really good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I keep joking, <laughs> but not being, not really being, not serious that they need to do a social network too, because a lot of shit has happened since the social network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Electric <laughs> Boogaloo. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you like Social Network, watch uh, Steve Jobs, which is also written by Aaron Sorkin. That's a phenomenal fucking movie. That was. I really awesome. enjoyed that movie. Yeah, yeah, for me, I like even better than the Social Network. I, yeah, I, I, mean, I fully acknowledge Social Network is a proper film. The yeah. uh, Steve Jobs is like feels like an adaptation of a a play, but it's it a does, really yeah. great play. It, it, it was my number one movie. I don't get about it though. I mean, man, the way that thing moves and it just carries. It's, it is like a roller coaster in its own way, and it's each act is just like a ride in of itself, and um, it is crazy. Michael Fassbender. I mean, oh hell yeah, fucking yeah. Hell, yeah. Uh, the, at Kill Bill's Volume One and Two are on Hulu now. Oh, I've watched those in a long time, actually. I, I I'll ride for uh, Volume One is like one of my favorite, like sort of meta action films of all time. Volume oh, yeah. Two is, I thought, kind of a disappointment by comparison, but it's still it was one yeah. of those going back to it a second time. I was a little more relaxed about it. It's still really good, oh, it's fun. Point that, point yeah, point to see, to see Volume One in the theater, it was like I think it was like uh, my fourteenth birthday, and it uh it. Blew on my mind. It, 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 it made me want to seek out other movies that were like it and really helped me become a much better movie geek because I was like, okay, well, where are all the movies that inspired it? I read art, every interview with Tarantino and wrote down every movie that influenced it and went to the video store. My dad had just gotten Netflix at the time and seeking <laughs> out every movie that he put on those lists. And wow, it just it, it put me on a good path. <laughs> I got to see the, uh, the original uh, Cannes Film Festival cut. Uh, Tarantino has a theater here in LA where he did a, a week long uh, event where you could go see the original with the intermission yeah. one vert, like the, the whole bloody affair is oh, what it's called. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and I, I want to go there. If I ever go to LA again, I definitely want to check the theater out. It, Cause there's I'm scenes sure like cut from the movie that are in volume one and two, uh, oh. particularly there <laughs> is no information whatsoever that BB exists uh, as still uh, <laughs> yeah, until I, she wa- Beatrice walks through the door of the house sure. to kill Bill and oh, there's wow. Beatrice. Uh, See, I um I have a bootleg DVD of the Japanese cut of the first movie oh. somewhere around here. Oh, wow. Movie night. <laughs> movie night. <laughs> movie night yeah. I'm movie trying night. to do this Brady Bunch thing where people talk and I look at where the cameras are organized and look at where the camera like like TC what? <laughs> hey, 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 Mike, what are you doing? <laughs> I, really to, I really wish I could have seen a Kill Bill where Warren Beatty said yes to the role of Bill. Ooh, yeah, man. I would I like to see that as well. I would have watched that hard, man. Uh, yeah. So, no, not a great movie, but I recommend this because we have a watch a movie with us for subscribers that you can download for the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah. It's on Hulu. It's a terrible, terrible film. It's a terrible it's a movie. movie that made Sean Connery quit acting. It is. <laughs> yep. You're right. And who can blame him? Well, you've heard his I quote about like, it. I'm where, done now. Where I'm he done. was like, they offered me Lord of the Rings and I didn't understand it. So I said, no, they offered me the matrix. So I didn't understand it. So I said, no, after those films performed, they offered me league of extraordinary gentlemen. I didn't understand it. And I said, yes. The only him. decision he's made in his life that was better than that was the red jumpsuit and the thigh high boots. <laughs> <laughs> they offered him uh, a part of his, his part in Indiana Jones four, but uh, he said, nah, I'm good. I'm like in retirement. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, I'm sorry. Knock, what knock. were you talking he about? He came out of retirement only, though for an interview. fourth. Movie. What fourth? No, there are only three films there. I don't know what. Oh. <laughs> the one with the fridge. The one with the fridge. So, lastly, am I dropping on the list? And this is another one. I'll be curious to know which of y'all have actually seen these. Um, there was this two films. The first one is great. The second one is so-so, but the first one is so great that it influenced so many movies that came after with Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Well, uh, you know what I'm talking Romancing about? the Stone. Romancing the, the Stone. stone. Huh. 
and it, the roses. It, and no, shut up. And, <laughs> that, that exists because of romancing the stone. Yeah, yeah no, that's right. We got back to the future because of romancing the stone because Zemeckis yeah. was an untested director, and then yeah. that movie killed yeah. in the box office. I love and then him and Bob Gale got back to the future. Yep. No, uh, Romancing the Stone uh, and Jewel and Isle, it's lesser, but still worth watching. Oh, no. uh, where uh, this great romantic action comedy with Michael Douglas, a young Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner. Uh, and then Danny DeVito is a very important third tier of it, which once again, Frank, is why all three of them are the stars of War of the Roses because no, they no, were yeah. no, monster yeah. successes back in their day, but they've been so largely forgotten. It's insane. It, it is I, insane. And it's it's really cool because you get it's so hard to get a romantic com romantic action comedy with man, such you know awesomely written characters. That that the really good like male and female protagonists. They're both awesome to watch and they both got their own quirks and they're both like messed up in their own ways and I, just, I love watching the chemistry between the two of them every time I watch those two movies. Oh, they're so great. Yeah, it's one of the, I, if you were to say what's the best romantic chemistry in like a sort of like action comedy, that's going to be right up there, top of the list. And and so many people, so many younger people have not seen them because they've just not pushed them towards like being, oh, these were classics that you guys should see. And they really are. They're really great. Uh, all right. So I'm going to move on to news. If Marco is out there still, Marco, are you still there? He is. Yeah, he's just want to get involved in here. I know you you love to be on camera and talk about stuff because sure, Marco. If Marco is there, send uh, click that invite link again, and I will join you. And I know we're going to run long tonight because I have stuff. Uh, but nobody has anything better better to do right now. Come on, it's the end fun. of the world. What are we? Right, what are we going to be doing? We're going to watch some drinks on our own. Really right? after this. We has time enough to type shit. He doesn't have time. To <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Marco. <laughs> He's got Caribbean Queen stuck in his head, if I'm reading his information correctly. He's going to type the word. He's here. He's here. Marco, you're not, you're not showing up on my thing, so maybe like like close the window and try to re, re, uh, redo it. Oh, here he goes. Okay, all right. So let's see. Studio is limited. Okay, so someone has to leave. Who wants to leave? Sorry. Someone's got to leave. It's got to be six people on screen. Who's going? I'll, 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 I'll make right, room I'll for Marco. Oh. What? Who's doing it? it? I'll, just, I'll just type frenetically in the chat. That's fine. Okay, Jen, we love you. We'll Jennifer, talk to I want to talk Harry Potter know. with you sometime. Seriously. I'm down for that anytime, boo. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Marco. Hi, Marco. Hey. Marco. Marco's Hello. been dying to talk to this fucking thing. What's up, everybody? Someone had to. <laughs> Someone had to. <laughs> I apologize. That was... Hey, am I on? Oh, I you are on. on. What's up, everybody? How you doing? <laughs> We're doing well. Everybody oh, doing good? Right. Everybody's still good? Now I've got Caribbean oh, Queen oh. stuck in my goddamn head. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to point out, though. As a kid, I always thought he was saying Caribou Queen, and that confused the fuck out of me. That is Caribou <laughs> Queen. Last beer. That sounds like um, a great uh, Roger Corman yeah. movie. <laughs> Machek is like, no. Okay, that's Aww. fine. Anyway, we're going to go into news stories. I love this. The producers of The Office are working on a new comedy inspired by people working from home during the coronavirus that will be shot just like this. Like, oh, no, like an idea is like windows <laughs> coming and going from yeah. the stuff. Yeah, the home office. Office home edition. AM. I do not want to watch that. I am living it. I don't need it. <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be right back. I guess I'm all around the hair. It can Lee be Herman. done. I don't so have there to was, watch it, was it a searching the it. Sorry. I... From its phone. Oh, shit. Somebody start again. <laughs> the world went crazy. Lift. What happened? Oh, we kind of froze or... up a little bit. Oh, Mike sorry. is probably I'm gone off to that. silence I... Dean. Once I'm again, oh my god, Mike disappeared. Oh, Mike's gone. Yeah. <laughs> this is one of those David Copperfield tricks. All he really did was <laughs> turn the camera, and you think he disappeared. <laughs> We're just choosing Mike as the Statue of Liberty in this scenario, or like a jumbo jet, but he's really there. We've just fooled the audience at home. <laughs> Uh, it's a really simple <laughs> trick once you figure out the mechanics of it. And actually, you, you say that, Marco, about like, ah, I don't want to see them. I was like, man, like after seeing uh, that that John Chu movie, uh, Searching, oh, yeah. Searching, which was Searching. really With, great, I, I came so, close to being on my top 10 or, or top 20 of the decade because I've never seen a movie that actually utilize computer screens to that degree. I mean, you see computer screens in movies all the time, yeah, yeah. but to use it as a narrative device and to build tension, 
it, it was just a master class in how to take something that is contemporary and i like that they used youtube and google you know usually interfaces in movies are like generic kind of bullshit things that don't look like they would actually ever be on a real computer but they actually took those tools that are recognizable to people today okay. and turned it into a vehicle for suspense and i mean the ending of that movie is kind of wonky uh, but up to that point, it, it, it's just solid. That, that is a lot of uh, Chris. Wait, hold on, one person at a time. Uh, Frank, is that streaming anywhere? No, I don't know. TC. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, you said the the this is being conceptualized as a comedy that's going to be done this style. Yeah, that's it's correct? by the creators okay. of the Office. The idea okay. being it's an Office type scenario, but everyone who's because of the coronavirus, right, being to. Do well, well, that can be that can be done to great effect. Uh, whereas searching is more of a suspense thriller. Uh, Modern Family did an episode all from one computer screen. It's uh, it was oh, in the yeah. sixth or seventh yeah. season called Connection Lost. It's all in real time and it's all done from Claire's computer screen. It's hilarious and touching. It's awesome. So by the way, this search, is searching is on Netflix. For the record, uh, it's on Netflix. Oh yeah, definitely uh, worth watching. You know what's yep. about FTC is like they like the cast members couldn't work. Like the devices themselves, they didn't know how to actually do that. So they had these crew members who were used to like carrying cameras, actually carrying like little like mobile screens to shoot the actors in. And, you know, just Tyler Ferguson said it was so sad. It's an incredible <laughs> episode, like, uh, and it's very funny. And and so the fact that it's that has existed, searching exists. The fact that these are the creators of The Office, like. I mean, if they can get it out quickly, that'll be nice and timely. If they get it out a year from now, hopefully we're like, well, this oh, is God. dated. Let's wait. Yeah, I'm that, that's right. so topical. You have to do it now. The great yeah. thing is they could do it now they could. from their own homes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could Skype Steve Carell and have him read some lines for you. you know? <laughs> I'm sure they'd be cool with it. Yeah. I know. I, I got I a, I, I, on now. We know we're a virtual meeting every day. I'm working. I'm literally working from home, so that hits too close to the bone for me. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. It's like comedy is about talking to the things you've experienced, right? And they're going to do this. I've been saying, first off, expect a movie about a heist planned during the coronavirus. That right. someone's writing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Like yeah. 12 people are writing that movie right now. No question. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. And second, some sort of romantic comedy about right. like roommates living together. It's already. Keep going, keep going. Tell me more. Good. This yeah. is good. Uh, uh, good. <laughs> See, and, and this was something we were talking about uh, on the one of us.net. Uh, well, all of us.net, uh, which if you're listening to this and you, you haven't been on there, you should because, you know, you get to talk with us and we chat about all kinds of crazy shit. But that was something that was really on my mind. The idea that there are pandemic movies and, and stories that are going to be told in a variety of media, mm -hmm. but they are going to have to do something that rarely gets done in movies, which is acknowledge coronavirus. <laughs> like you can't do a pandemic movie without talking about coronavirus the way, like, you know how in zombie movies, no one ever seems to have ever seen a zombie movie. Like what's going on? It's like, well, clearly it's a zombie movie. Any pandemic movie in the future is going to have to have a character who goes, oh, my God, this is just like coronavirus all over again. You know, mm -hmm. you can do that with zombies because you just assume there's a universe where no one's ever seen a zombie. And yeah. certainly no one in your life has ever been attacked by a zombie, although except maybe that one time I was on Sixth Street many years ago. Uh, <laughs> But I, 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 that would have been I keep telling there. you, there were I've apologized for that, Marco, many times. <laughs> I drink tequila, whiskey, and vodka. I just wanted a hug. Okay, <laughs> you know, I didn't Nibble know who the fuck you were, bit. man. You freaked me out. Uh, you know, just some random guy walking up to you on the street. But yeah, it's all of these pandemic movies that are going to be inspired by what's happening now, they have to acknowledge that you cannot do a pandemic story in the future without mentioning coronavirus, that would be like talking about making a war movie that pretends that World War II never happened. Uh, so sure. I'm going to be really interested to see how they balance that because you can't pretend it never happened. Right. You know, it's not Don't like zombie you. movies where you just like, ah, eh, no one's ever been Bradley had a zombie invasion. We could just pretend it never happened. This is a thing that happened. And okay. I don't know if those movies are going to succeed because those movies they made after 9-11 you know, all of those movies that came out after Guantanamo that were really angry yeah. and, and like, you know, righteous about the horrible things that were happening. 
those movies got good reviews, but the audience didn't go to see them because we're okay watching disaster if it's a fiction and there's a distance to it, but it might be too fresh right now. I don't know. Do you want to see a pandemic movie after this is all over? I think distance is the key where I think people need some time and space. And even then, I don't know. I don't know how long you can, how, how long mm-hmm. for the first World War II movie to be embraced by the public after the war ended. But. They, well, they were was, making films. It was films. pretty yeah, right. right. Them yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. John Wayne was making World War II movies yeah. like right well, on the John right Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure. but, and those I mean, were like flag waving propaganda. You remember 9 11? And you remember how long it was before the first 9 11 movie? It wasn't very long. Very long. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. nobody talks about those yeah. movies. Nobody wants to. No, but I didn't want to see them. Yeah, I didn't want. Nobody wants to. Paul made them. To be honest with you, who wants to go relive that? I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I know Paul Greenglass <laughs> made that movie that I made, but I didn't want to go see that fucking movie. But that's just me. No. Yeah. Did anybody see the Oliver Stone movie with Nicolas Cage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, yeah. The other 9/11 movie. Yeah. Uh, World, yeah. World, World Trade, Trade Center, Center was the Nick Cage one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so moving on, Disney's Artemis Fowl movie, which I know I'm the only guy in the world who was like, "Yes, Artemis I read the book. It's good. I, read, I know, wasn't it great?" So you know. it's like Harry Potter. If the kid in question, who's like this genius, like like kid, except in this case, he's rich and has this huge family of richness and money instead I of him, so I will, but, yeah, so he's like so Harry cool. Potter, Batman. Batman. He wants to be the ultimate villain. He wants to be a James oh. Bond villain. <laughs> But like he ends up always doing the right thing accidentally, and yeah. kind of like ending up doing the being the good guy without meaning to, and they're great. I love them. So he's like crew from Minions. Okay, shut up, Marco. <laughs> okay, now I lost interest. God damn it, Marco. There, there, but I have no question that those movies, <laughs> Artemis Fowl's been around for a while. No question those guys are ripping off Artemis Fowl. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For Artemis sure. Fowl's great. Disney has announced, though, their theatrical film. They're like, we're not going to wait. We're just going to put it on Disney Plus. So that's going to come cool. out on Disney Plus. Also, Indiana Jones 5 going to late 20. <laughs> Oh God, Jesus I'm Christ! No. Light. Everybody made a face. That was great. Twenty-two. <laughs> <It's a large laughs> you, guys, you guys know Harrison Ford's going to be like eighty-two by then, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, oh, there is a way. Fucking point. Like of the guys falling off a truck or something like that. They're just going to like, 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 like. What is it? What do they call it in porn when they put people's faces on, on like porn actors? Uh, Deep fake. <laughs> Deep fake. Fake. Yeah. Harrison Ford's like face on the Channing Tatum or some shit. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> Superimposing. Look, there is a way. So basically, it's the Count Dooku fight all over again. Yeah. <laughs> there is a way to make the fifth one good, though. Body. <laughs> oh, well, let's hear TC out. What's this? Because there, and there's a precedent for this. Oh, is that. Red card, man. Is that. Uh, uh, Temple of Doom yeah. takes place before Raiders of Lost Ark, kind of chronologically. Yeah, yeah, it does. So they could set five before four, and we won't have to have any of that crap. No Mutt, no Karen Allen, and just set it before. <laughs> just saying, there's a precedent for it. I, I, I agree. Although, the, the, from the last thing I heard about this, they said it's taking place after, but they're establishing that like Mutt went off and did his own thing, and there's actually going yeah. to be another son. Oh, gosh. Another son? <laughs> just bring Short Round back. Come on now. He's, yeah. he's, he's right. an adult. You can have him kicking ass. Like, uh, Short round would have been so much better. <laughs> um, oh, man. But, oh, wow. Don't, don't, don't blame this on Karen Allen, though. This was not her fault. No, <laughs> has, has the beef, you know, rehabilitated himself yet? Just bring him back. Why not? Fuck it. Let him back in. He <laughs> outserved his time in the wild. He should so, probably, you know, get a, a, a blank. You know, he gets I a think, pass now. He can come I back. I think what Mark is saying here is that they need to just do it and bring <laughs> just back. do it <laughs> speaking of just it. doing it how Needham, the 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 guy who did uh smoking the bandit yeah. and uh, uh uh what am i thinking of marco um i, I know the one you're thinking of but animal i'm run. Animal run. Animal run. Animal run. Animal run yes the guy animal run series one, one great. of the great Comedy action directors of the eighties. about he did this BMX movie in nineteen eighty six called Rad. <laughs> I oh, oh yeah, I saw Rad. Yeah, Rad is Rad is somehow getting a four K release. I'm not entirely sure how that's happening, but that's what's it's happening. kind of gone some kind of call following over the years. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, I so it was bad. gonna it was gonna show at South by Southwest. Uh, Lori Laughlin who was like a teenage year uh, girl at that point from full house and all that was yeah. in this. It's, it was like one of those terrible B max movies in the, the, back then. It, uh, like there were many 
terrible there were no good ones. Movies. Okay, stop right there. You yeah. were implying <laughs> that there were never any good ones. They were all bad, Chris. Uh, Breedlove points out Gator. Gator's yeah. great. That's a Needham, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about BMX movies. No, no, no. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, we like several Hal Needham movies, but yeah, Hal Needham is fine. But for whatever reason, this is the one they're re-releasing is a big deal. And uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, 4K rad. Anyone's ready to thrash. No way. I'm sorry. Thrash <laughs> came out the same year by a different director. Not the same movie. Also BMX film. Uh, I want to say not a lot of April Fool's jokes out there this year. Good call, people. Yeah. It's not yeah. the year yeah. for it. Like anybody who did it, I think everyone was like, dude, stop. This like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and what they can do. I mean. But, uh, yeah, but I do want to p- tip my hat, which I'm not wearing, uh, to whoever created that fake Twitter account uh, under that was saying it was HBO Max's Twitter account, saying they were releasing the Zack Snyder Justice League cut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you, oh, my goodness. Wow. That thread so went out. Oh, tears. It was so good. <laughs> Snyder <laughs> cut. Get over it, people. Uh, and lastly, a film that we're getting ready to review, Sea Fever. I believe, Marco, aren't you on that one? I am not. Okay, I thought you were. But anyway, someone here is on this. Uh, sea Fever, we saw the Fantastic Fest. Really solid sort of The Thing-ish type movie, but at sea. It's having its live premiere April 9th. Uh, if you Google Sea Fever official site, it'll come up. You spend five bucks and you also get a live Q&A with the actors and director. I think that's really cool. I really cool. hope that more of the films that had scheduled a theatrical release, a limited theatrical release, are going to try and do stuff like this. We're like, okay, here's the way we get people to do this is we set it up where it's a live Q&A. People can chat and ask questions online, do things to make it worth people's time to check it out. And Sea Fever, I thought was, well, I don't know what the reviewer, I'm not on the review because it's been like, Whenever Fantastic Fest was September, uh, since I saw it, I don't feel the before, time. Years ago. Before, before times, before, yeah, before times, the before time. times, <laughs> but Titan Day, yeah. But I, so I'm not it's on the, the review, BCE, it's BCE before coronavirus era. I'm gonna say I liked it, <laughs> but we'll see how the review goes. But regardless, uh, that's a cool option right there. If you're especially if you're a horror fan, if you like the thing, you like stuff like that, that's pretty cool. That's April 9th. Check that out. So this kind of okay. is bringing us to the end of this episode. I want to give everybody a chance to say whatever last things they want to get out of anything they want to promote or, or talk about. Uh, Mike, the editor, what do you got? <laughs> uh, just follow me on Instagram at oh hey, it's Mike JM. I post a lot of uh, pictures of the dog and some animation I've been working on lately. Harmony? Uh, I'm gonna plug my husband. Ha! Huh? No, um, uh, Michael Van Slyke. Really? Wow. <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> not on camera. No, no. So uh, he's gonna come on this show. I'm, I bet you. So it's gonna be awesome. Uh, he, Archangel Arts on Facebook. He makes uh, graphic art and computer art and cigar box guitars. So oh. yeah, we're poor. I'm on furlough. So please check oh. us out. <laughs> um, Marco. You know, just take care of yourselves out there. Be responsible. Be smart. Stay the fuck indoors. Don't go out if you don't have to. And, uh, you know, I know some of you are extroverts. Personally, I, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm not right. I prepared my entire life for this. I, I, I can go whole days without talking to another person. And I am fine. I like it. Uh, but I know not everybody has that option and not everybody uh, just feels that way. I mean, you so, say that, but no one is more active on social media right now than Marco. Like you post something, <laughs> Marco is going to have a comment on it. So I'm like, yeah. you, know, you go all days without talking to another person. That's not entirely true. Is it's it? not entirely true. This isn't true isolation, but I recognize how fortunate I am. Okay. I'm gainfully employed, working from work, and I have access to media and instant communications. But not everybody has all of that. And if sure. you're kind of struggling right now, uh, you know, I just hope you find some way to, to, to entertain yourself because this is all going to pass. And uh, hopefully we'll see you when this is all over. So that's all, all I really got to say about that. <laughs> uh, uh, TC, personally, I want to welcome you once again. You just came yeah. in today. We just got in touch today about like, man, we... I, I'm so happy I put out a call like we need more people and you were like oh sorry I'm late to this but uh I was like I we've been friends for so long I don't know what's like I, I, I saved a spot for you <laughs> like come on in I'm so excited you're here what do you got 
Well, thank thank you for having me and and nerding out with uh, all you guys has been a blast. So I'm I'm I thank you, Chris, for letting me jump in late to the game and uh, take me off the bench, Coach. Uh, uh, you let me plug it earlier. I'll plug it again. Studio demands uh, the studio demands it podcast that I do with my writing partner, where we pitch conceptualize and craft a film on the spot based on the stipulations of some st studio that our listeners provide for us. Uh, so you can hear us conceptualize uh, a predator three or what a better diehard five would have been, or if they had continued the uh, dark universe of uh, the monster dark universe that Universal was doing. Uh, you can check out all my films uh, through Redacted Media on YouTube and Facebook. And um, yeah, I think that's. I was going to say one more thing, and I totally am just blanking right now. So I guess that's all I have to say <laughs> until I remember what I was going to. Oh, I do. I do have one thing to say. Since everyone's trapped inside, and you're clearly you've referenced uh, recommend some amazing films. Uh, I want to recommend Why the Last Man, the comic my favorite a comic book series of all time, and it's uh, an apocalypse. It's it the, you get to see the apocalypse happen and the end of the world happen and what the results of that are. So please, if if you're if you're a reader type or you like them funny pages, uh, please check out Why the Last Man, a fantastic series. So there you go. Agreed, right. Frank. Frank, 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 Frank. I go follow my stuff on um, Synapse <laughs> and uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, Frank Film Geek. And um, no, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to be here because I do have to work from home. I have a 10 a.m. meeting every fucking day. <laughs> and um, I'm really hating it. I miss my desk. I miss my office chair. But um, it's okay because I'm going to watch the, uh, the nice guys right now. So, yes, uh, if you are a good idea. Doing, everybody should be watching the nice guys tonight. I just might do that too. Actually, I might do that too. Yep. I would like to point out, Frank, uh, looking Frank. at your wolf poster in the background. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, so, if you guys don't know, Frank is a huge Michelle Pfeiffer fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's all right. Where ships her? <laughs> uh, have you ever had a? Have you had a Michelle right. Pfeiffer podcast? It's just like a Pfeiffer thon or Pfeiffer cast or something. <laughs> I for feeling. I, I I do a special I on synapse. I do a special uh, tribute to her birthday every year, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. So, there you go. The, uh, how many other Pfeiffer movie posters do you have in your house? I'm just curious. Um, turn the camera. None. <laughs> so I have uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got bat. Oh, wait, Catwoman on there. Oh, yeah. nice. no, but I got I've got a uh, five T-shirts. So. Yes, and Lua okay. Pope. You have five I remember you had that the Catwoman T-shirt, yeah. Yes, she is. Wow. Yeah. But no, this is my favorite Pfeiffer movie, so that's why I had that. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's fair. I, I mean, all right, let's do it, Frank. Are you ready? I'm gonna yeah. do it. Like pretend like you're like not really paying attention. Go ahead. You're like you're like. Eh. He's looking at him. Wolf. <gasps> what? <laughs> Where was the scene from that movie? <laughs> anyway, here at 90s Mike Nichols movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna finish this up. Thank you everybody for listening. Please cross post this, tell people about this. It's a lot of fun. We do this every Sunday. One of us.net is also going to be doing more and more video shows. This is my show I do on Sundays, which is uh, the, the end of the world show. Uh, we always have different people. Look at TC's got the Brady Bunch thing going on there. I like that. Let's see if it is out. Oh wait, I got it. There we. Oh wait, there I got it. Look, here's the story. It. I'm poking you right now. Oh man, go oh, to the hey, I'm Marco, working like a puppet. Who yeah. called up some assholes to do on be on his podcast? <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't puppet. stop. Right. He was a hand puppet. Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs>